after you've been here for so many years, you've seen you know, almost everything there is to see. When someone else sees something for the first time, you see how excited they get. It kind of you know, makes it fun for you too. Interns at the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab in Panacea definitely see and feel some interesting things. It's kind of neat to get some of the great time, you know. Don't come here unless you're not afraid to get your sleeves wet. That's true. I leave here dirty 90% of the days. <laughs> We've always had volunteers coming to the lab, and I went to FSU myself, and I, I went through the biology program, and I really enjoyed it. And I started volunteering here through college. That's how I got a job. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity for the college kids to come out and get experience and have some fun and help them you know, move on to a job. Well, I think right now the goal is to get experience. In this field, experience is everything. You know, If you're looking to hire someone, you really look at their experience not just their, you know, education. The diversity of job duties performed by interns reflect the many services offered by Gulf Specimen. We built it up to, to as much as possible be like a, a real job for them. And they have training materials that build them up in the different aspects of what we do in the biological supply and educational programs and sea turtle rehabilitation. There are a lot of things that are the same every semester, like helping take care of the aquariums and feeding the animals and general husbandry. The lab was created in the 1960s by Jack and Ann Rudlow with the purpose of supplying live specimens to teachers and researchers. I'm from Orlando. Orlando is obviously not near the ocean at all, but my family has a place on the beach in Vero Beach, so I kind of grew up around there. Like I learned how to surf at a really young age, but other than maybe once or twice, I never been out on a boat in the ocean, so that was a new experience for me. From our dock that we left is about 15 miles, but directly from land over there is 10 miles. We'll go anywhere from 30 miles to 5 miles. We, we try to cover every area, so the, the right boat matters when you're this far off. Right now we're at about 17 feet, okay. um, and what we would be on is kind of a sandy live bottom, we like call it, a lot of limestone outcrop with soft corals, sponges, and so on. They get a lot of nutrients coming out of the river. Good catch. That's what we were looking for. Gotcha. You studied a small bucket or a big one? Uh, I do them in a big bucket. Two ones. Two ones. So they actually are in here. Uh, they actually come in to eat just live fish and they can reach out, grab them. I've actually caught them with the uh, with the uh, octopus uh, and put them in the bucket and the next thing you know it's just the octopus and then there's three more fish that pop out that he's had to take with him, which is kind of impressive. We move to a shallower spot covered by seagrass beds. It's a really nice habitat to get a lot of uh, sea urchins. And that's what we're looking for today, is the uh, different types of sea urchins. We're hopefully going to get the short spine one you see a lot in the grass beds. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll find a couple of dwarf octopus. This is what we need. This is octopus juvenile, so this is actually a full-grown octopus. And uh, they will hide in little shells out here. Had Travis here uh, go through and try and figure out a way to stand sponges up, and yeah, this is a good idea of fishing poles. And we actually implanted fishing poles in the rocks. They keep the sponges upright, so they start filtering the water. And A makes the aquarium look so much better and more natural, but B has actually made the, them live so much better too, which is just one of those little unique things about having a good intern program that brings just these different ideas into the facility that make it better. I was actually born and raised in Key Largo. I've been diving, free diving, scuba diving since since I could swim. You know, I could probably swim before I could walk. My parents just threw me in the water at one point. You know, let me figure it out on my own. Chloe Jackson interned at Gulf Specimen over the summer. She's currently making use of their dock for an experiment. 
I'm working on an honors thesis right now. Currently I have two sets of tiles, 15 on this floating dock right here that are constantly submerged underwater, and 15 on the regular dock that are exposed to air at um, low tide. So I'm just kind of looking at the different diversity that grows on the different tiles based off of the ones that can handle air exposure and organisms that can't. Over there we have oysters and barnacles. They have kind of a harder outer covering that can defend against loss of water. And then over here we have lots of different organisms, soft-bodied anemones, uh, tunicates, rhizoans, also oysters and barnacles and things like that. Kara's experience at the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab has caused her to refocus her career plans away from research. I think it also gave me a feel of what I kind of did and didn't want my career to be like in the future. I really enjoy giving tours to all the children. I like to impart some of the knowledge and kind of my passion to see if maybe they'd one day kind of want to help conserve our environment and our oceans because I know that's a really big thing. Having the kids in every semester, it's, it kind of gives you more energy and it's, it's a change and it makes it more fun for us too. For more information on the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab, visit gulfspecimen.org. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.